Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at one aspect of Get and Transform from Excel 2016, and that is Joins. Now if you're using Excel 2013, it'll be part of Power Query rather than Get and Transform, but the concept's the same and uh, you should be able to follow along. So let's take a look at how to use the Joins component of Get and Transform in Excel. So let's walk through our scenario here. We have two tables and this table is called complete. If I select it and go up to the design you can see it says complete there. There is a total of 16 names, their departments, and the grade they got from completing a specific course. This table is called promote. It has 11 names on it. Seven of them match between the complete and the promote table. So that leaves that there are four unique and I've color coded them so you can see which ones match. So I have two tables, one with 16 names, one with 11. They have seven matches, one has nine unique ones and the other four. And in my little table here in the upper left, here are the six different type of joins that you'll find in Get and Transform. There's an inner join, a left outer, a left anti, a right outer, a right anti, and a full outer. Don't really make a whole lot of sense just by seeing the names, but let's kind of explain what each is, and then we'll walk through most of them so you can see how they work. If I want to compare or merge two different tables, if I use the inner join, that will give me a, the, the list of items that are only on both tables. So in this case, since there are seven matches, if I do an inner join, I, can, I should end up with a table of seven items on it. If I do a left outer join, that means it will give me a list of the items on the left table and whatever ones are on both lists. If I do a left anti-join, it will give me a list of items that are only on the left list. So I should end up in that case with just a list of nine unique names. And then the right outer and the right anti are very similar. If I do a right outer, it'll give me a list of all the items on the right list and that are on both lists. If I do a right anti, it will give me a list of only the ones on the right list only. So there I should end up with just four unique ones. And then the full outer join will give me a list of all the items on both tables and will merge the information from both together. So again, it may sound a little bit confusing, but I think as we walk through the various examples, it'll help you understand it a little bit more. So I'm going to go to the data tab and in the data tab that's where you'll see the get and transform group. Now the first thing you want to do is if your data is not in tables either convert them to tables or use the from table aspect and Excel will automatically convert those to tables for you. But you must use tables when you're using Power Query or get and transform. So the first thing I want to do is click anywhere in my first table and I will say from table Excel brings up the query editor and all I want to do at this point is click the down arrow and close and load to and what I want is only create a connection and I'll say load and now Excel you can see over in my workbook queries it's inserted the complete table and you can see a quick uh, example of that. Now I'll click in the second one again from table. I want to do a close and load two. Again if I did a close and load all it would do is just return the exact same table back to Excel and I don't want to do that. I want to merge these. So I'll say close and load two. Again only create a connection and I'll load that one. So now I have my two tables loaded in Excel into Get and transform. So what I want to do is I want to select new query. I want to combine them and I want to merge them. So now Excel is saying, okay, what tables do you want to merge? 
So the top one is considered as the left table. So I'm going to use the complete table for that one. The bottom one is the right table. So again, I'll choose the other one, which is promote. And then the question is, what is the column or columns that I want to use to compare the two so I can make sure that they align things or merge things properly. In this case, I'm going to choose the name column. If there were multiple ones, let's say I wanted to use two different columns to do that, I would hold down my control key and then maybe select department as the second one. And you can see it just added numbers. So the name is the first and department is the second. But here I'm going to just go back to the name as being the ones I want to use. And then down at the bottom, I can choose which join I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to choose an inner join. And that's going to give me the list of items that are on both lists only. So I'm going to choose inner join and I'll say OK. And what Excel does is it will give me a preview of the joined or merged tables. Now it will expand the left table, but the right one is collapsed. So I can expand that just by clicking this button right here. And when I do, it's going to say, which of the columns do you want to include? Now I'm going to just leave it as all, but one thing I'm going to uncheck is use original column name as prefix. I don't need that, so I'm going to uncheck that and say OK. And now you can see it's expanded that second table and it's aligned them. So I have LC, LC, Melvin, Melvin, etc. the departments, the grades from the one table and the level from the other. Now, I can import all this, and then once I get it back in Excel, I can delete the columns I want to delete or don't need. I can do it from here. I can select that one, hold my Control key, select that one, and click Remove Columns. Or if I delete the expanded uh, step that I have, when I hit Promote, I can uncheck Name and Department and say OK, and it will only bring in the level for the ones that match. Now I'll do a close and load. It'll put that grouping on a brand new worksheet. And now I have that list of seven names. And if you recall, I had seven matches. So this list is the merging of only the names of the two tables that are in both. But it merged all the other columns. So in this case, it added the level to it. I could have kept the names and departments for both in there, but that's somewhat redundant. So now I have exactly what I wanted, the merging with an inner join, which an inner join will give me the list of items on both only. Okay, so that's the inner join. Now for any of the other five, again, if you were only going to do those initially, you would have to go through the process of going to the data tab, and selecting from table and doing a connection only. But since I've already done that, I don't have to repeat that to do the other joins in my same workbook because as you can see, they're already in my workbook query, so I don't have to do the connection only. So I'm going to skip that step for the other um, examples that we're going to go through. But if you were doing any of the other ones as the first one, you would have to do that connection only. So let's see what a left outer join is. A left outer join will give me a list of the items on the left and that are on both. So it's going to give me all 16 of these plus any one that's on the second list that is also on the first. So I'll do a new query. I'll do a combine, merge. Again, I'll do the complete as the top. I'll do the promote as the bottom. I'll select names as the column I want to match. And I'm going to do a left outer. I'll say OK. I'll expand that right one. I don't, again, don't want to use that use original column name as prefix. And I'll say OK. And now it's combined those two, and it's given me all the ones from the left plus the ones from the right that are also on the left or that match. 
And again, I could eliminate and delete those two, the name and the department ones. I could have done that any of the three ways that we showed. Here, I'm going to select these two columns. I'll say remove columns, and then I'll do a close and load. And now I have here the left outer join, which is all the items from the left column, plus for the ones from the right that exactly matched. And so it put the level against the names that were identical of the ones on the, the left table. And now I have that join process. Okay, next let's do a left anti-join. Now a left anti-join is going to give me a list of the items that are on the left list only. So that should give me nine items because there's nine unique ones here. So it's, a, again, a good tool that you can use if you're trying to compare and find out where there are duplicates or where the unique ones are between two tables. So again, I've already done the process of doing a connection only. So I'll just go to my data tab, new query, combine, merge. I'll select complete, promote, select the columns I want to match, and I want to do a left anti-join. I'll say, whoops, sorry, I forgot to click that one. Do a left anti, say OK. And again, if I expand this one, I should just get a bunch of nulls because, again, what this join does is give me the list of items that are only on the left. So again, I can delete all three of these and I can do a close and load. And so what Excel has given me now with that join is just the unique items, those nine unique items that were on the left list, eliminating any that were on both. So I only had that nine unique items. So that is the left anti-join. So the right outer and the right anti are the same as the left outer and the left anti, except using the right table as the primary one rather than the left. But it would give similar results. So I'm not going to walk through those two uh, outer join and anti join for the right table. But the concept would be the same. Finally, you have the full outer join, which is going to give me all the items on both lists. So again, I'll go to the data, get and transform, new query, combine, merge. Again, I'll choose the complete for the top. I'll choose the promote for the bottom and select the name column as the ones to match, and I am going to do a full outer. I'll say OK. And now when I expand this column, again, I'll uncheck that box there, and I'll say OK. And now I have everything from both tables. So I'm going to just go ahead and do a close and load. Now, again, it's a, it's a little bit confusing because Again, I have my names and the columns from the left table, and I have the names and the columns from the right table. So I can do a little bit of cleanup, for example. I can take this information, just move it over to here. Then I can delete these two columns. And now I have the list of all the names from both tables, the grades. Let me expand this out a little bit the grades for the ones that completed that course, the levels from the ones that matched, and also the ones that just were promoted but did not take that course. But I have them all combined into one table that I can now take and analyze it with pivot tables in any way I need to. So those are the six different joins that you'll find in Get and Transform or in 2013 in Power Query. And that's how you can do that in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.